Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Perez coming to you from Baltimore. Nigerians are mourning the death of 150 people who were killed in Baga in a Boko Haram suspected attack. In another attack last week in Maiduguri, hospital officials told the New York Times that the suicide bomber was perhaps a 10-year-old little girl. She was screened by a metal detector at the entrance of the market, but the bomb went off before she could be isolated, killing 20 people and wounding many more. Some people at the market speculated that she could have not even known what was strapped to her body. This incident is a stark reminder of the 200 girls that went missing last April who are yet to be found. Here to discuss the developments in Nigeria from Washington, D.C. is Ni Akuate. Ni is an independent analyst of African and international affairs. He's also the former executive director of Africa Action and an adjunct professor of African studies at Georgetown University. Thank you so much for joining us, Ni. It's a pleasure to be back. Ni, could you explain these most recent attacks on Nigerian civilians? Why is Boko Haram targeting civilians? I think um, you said more recent, and that is true. But, you know, Boko Haram has been around for about five years, and their modus operandum has not actually changed. They kill uh, a lot more civilians uh, than, than soldiers, and basically, you know, the as far as I'm concerned, they have not given a rational, re convincing reason for doing what they are doing, except that they want to make Nigeria ungovernable because they don't like the current uh, government and they are trying to, um, you know, wreck the government through violent means. Beyond that, it's hard to say what they are really uh, are, uh, going after. So this is not a religious faction. This is uh, the, the context or some background to this uh, attack would be really helpful for ordinary people. Me. Yes. Um, you know, the, the question of religion is always, uh, in these instances, uh, uh, is, is um, a little complex and interesting. Um, even, you know, there's been other terrorist attacks elsewhere, and one of the uh, things is that we think um, there should be a focus on Nigeria. So I don't want to turn the uh, spotlight on the other incidents, but um, they have this in common. There is the debate as to whether these very violent extremists are really uh, uh, moved by religious beliefs and whether those are mainstream religious beliefs or are they just violent thugs that wrap themselves up in a particular religion. So on the surface of it, of course, Boko Haram says that um, they are Muslims and they are doing this and they want to set up a, a, a caliphate and, and rule it according to Sharia, the holy law in the Quran. On the other hand, they kill so many innocent people that respected religious leaders say that these people at best, they are just um, using words. They, they, they are paying lip service because their behavior is very far from people who are really uh, 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 living by the rules of uh, uh, Islam. So that always raises the question, are they religious or not? Now, you said they have been around for five years, so they must be making some political demands uh, of the current government, or at least trying to favor, uh, curry a favor with the civilians. Uh, what is the real agenda here? The, uh, uh, that is a wonderful question, because uh, from my point of view, um, they haven't paid attention to them for all this time. They are all over the map. They change their demands. The one constant is that they come out and violently kill Nigerians, and, and especially given that we're talking about whether or not they are real Muslims, the majority of their victims have been Muslim Nigerians. So on the one hand, they can claim that they, they are aggrieved because Muslim Nigerians are not being treated well, but they themselves kill more Muslims. So that's number one. Number two, there are times when they say they want to bring Sharia to Nigeria, but if you want to change the government, and, and Nigeria has been a democracy for a while now, and for me, one of the interesting things is that Boko Haram did not uh, uh, arise when, for the better part of Nigeria's independence since 1960, uh, uh, 
they have been ruled by military dictators, usually of um, uh, northern Muslim origin, and Boko Haram did not arise. They arose when Nigeria turned to democracy. Now, in a democracy, if you want to change the government, that's fine. Persuade the people. You don't kill them. So I'm saying they are claiming that they are, they are defending the interests of Muslims that uh, doesn't convince me. They are claiming that they want to change the uh, country's system to Sharia law doesn't doesn't convince me. The only constant is their violent attacks. They have the, there was a point when the government even said, "Okay, we are willing to talk," because there was a lot of international pressure. And I hope that we will get to the point of the international community in general and the United States in particular. Their attitude and policy towards Nigeria vis-a-vis -vis Boko Haram, I am uh, quite unhappy with that. But the point is, pressure was put on the Nigerian government to say, you cannot solve the, this issue by military approach, so you need to talk to them. That, well, the Nigerian government tried to talk to them. Boko Haram showed no interest in talking. So whether it is talking, whether it's using the political process to change it, whether it's defending Muslims, for me, all those are false claims. Right, Neil, let's take up the question of the international community and U.S. foreign policy towards the region uh, and the Boko Haram in particular in, in the next segment, and I hope you can join us. Sure. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.